questions. Let me know what the quality is like because I had this problem last time. I, I've moved the router. Um, it just lost the connection then. So we're not off to a great start here, are we? Hi, Helen. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Andy. Hi, one, two, three, four. Second live stream of the day today because I don't want to move the channel. And uh, I think I'll sleep tonight, I think. Yeah, so here we are <clears throat> on a Sunday. Back again. And hopefully I'll be more regular. I didn't do one last week, did I? So I was out last week and I couldn't do one. And I tried to do one in a week, but we had such clear weather this week. I was actually out doing some... Um, doing some, you know, photography. I couldn't do any videos, though, because I struggled to do the videos. What I might do is I might see if I can make some videos out of what I did last week. I was actually out and about because we had some nice weather last week, some nice clear weather. Has anyone seen the stars lately? I was out doing star trail photographs last week, star trails. You know where you get the stars and the long... You know the thumbnail for this video? It's not my picture. The thumbnail was actually taken by Frank in Blackpool. So thanks to Frank in Blackpool for the thumbnail. And that was a picture that he took on Rivington Pike. I was with him up there. I took a fairly similar picture of the star trails up on Rivington Pike. We had a good time up there. It was very windy and cold. But that's what you've got to do sometimes if you want to go and get pictures of the night sky and you want to get proper photographs, you do have to sometimes put yourself out there in the cold. You know, you have to you have to go out there. Hi Anthony Goodwin from Staining. Yeah, so so I was in, I'll tell you where I was. Found this week that planets shine brighter than stars. Only took me 61 years to find out that. Yeah, Stefan, yeah. Planets, i tell you what, planets shine brighter than stars. Um, well, the brightest stars, anyway. Venus is brighter than the brightest star. I think Mercury might be as well, but Mercury is a funny one because Mercury, you only tend to see it in the twilight. So although Mercury is quite bright, you never see it in a dark sky. If you saw my video the other week, I show you how difficult it is to see Mercury. It's low down and it's in the twilight. So Mercury, Venus, Mars and Jupiter and Saturn, um, when, when they're high up, when they're fairly high up in the sky, they're all very bright and very easy to see, particularly Venus and Jupiter. They're the brightest. Venus is by far the brightest. Hi, Stephen the brightest of the planets because it's about the same size as Earth and it, uh, it has a very reflective... Uh, so it, well, you can't see the surface because the surface is all cloud. It's all, it's all cloud. Hi, Moon, it's Daydream. So I've been out... If you've been watching my videos lately, I've been out... But it's getting a bad time to see the planets now because a lot of them have disappeared. They're low down. You know, they're very low down. So <clears throat> I'll just, I use a program called Stellette. Hi, Julie Clay. So I use a program, and I'll just show you. It's called Stellarium. It's this one here. I don't know if you can see that. Stellarium. That's the program I use for my stars. And it, it tells you what's up in the sky. So at the moment, we've got, we have got quite a few planets that are visible, but they're just really, really low down. You have to be out early to see them. You, you do. You do have to be out early to see them. Um, so we, what's happened with Venus is it's, it, Venus has crossed in front of the sun from our perspective. It's crossed in front of the sun. Our side of the sun is going round. And now you can see Venus in the morning. But maybe it's a bit early yet. But in another month, you'll be able to see Venus pop up in the morning before the sunrise. So when it goes around the other side of the sun, instead of seeing it in the evening after the sunset, you see it before the sunset in the morning. So it's now a morning star rather than an evening star. So that's what happens with Venus. Yeah, it's really weird. It's really confusing, you know, because you've got the inner planets like Venus and Mercury are the inner planets. They're the planets that are inside the Earth's orbit. Whereas Jupiter, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn are outside 
of our orbit. So they have a different, the way that they move is, is different. The way that we see them move in the sky is very shiny chariot dealing high. Well, we've got 47 watching, hit the like button. Let's see if we can get some more people watching. Maybe some new people that uh, have not seen this channel before. If you've got any questions, ask any questions. I've not quite been keeping up with things like I normally do because I've had quite a lot of stuff on. And I've not really been able to do videos like I've, you know, I have done in the past. I've not, I'm going to try and do, I've, <coughs> I mean, I've been able to do videos on the other channel, but they're easy. It's easy to do videos for the other channel. It's not so easy to do videos for this channel. I mean, I was in Stanley Park this week, our local park, which is not too far from where I live. And we were doing Star Trails. I was there with Frank and I want to do an instructional video on Star Trails. Now I have done instructional videos on Star Trails before, but I think they're a little bit long winded. And I want to do one that's more concise, maybe. Kind of a bit more back to basics kind of Star Trail video. So if anyone wants to know about Star Trails, I'll see if I can make a video, an instructional video on how I took the Star Trails that we took this week. So the, the thumbnail to this video is a Star Trail captured by Frank in Blackpool, who kindly lent me the picture. And that's the sort of thing that I'm talking about. It's that kind of picture there. They're not hard to do. They're really, really not hard to do. If you're just getting into astrophotography, you want to take pictures of the night sky and things, star trails are the best thing to start with. And they're not hard to do. And you don't need anything special. You can even do them with a mobile phone these days. You can do star trails with one of these. Can you believe it? You can get a program called Nightcap app. Yeah, there's a program called Nightcap app on the iPhone and on Android. And it allows you to, a couple of going to visit into back to get in the telescope out of the garage, says Anthony. I do, I do like it up there. It's really, really good. It's not dark. It's not a dark, um, hi Steve, I'm going to watch another one of your videos, Steve. Thanks, Steve Nichols. Hi, Samantha. It's not dark at Rivington Park. It's not dark at all, but you're high up. So and I think being high up, the abandoned hunter, good evening. And I think being high up, it does make a big difference. And there's such a great view from there, from the top of Rivington Park, it's amazing. So if you, if you ever want to um, get a better view of the sky, get out of town, climb a, well, you don't have to climb a mountain. Maybe you could drive so far up a, up a hill or something like that. And it gets you above quite a bit of the High Midlands girl, quite a bit of the murk, you know. You don't realise that when you're in town and you're trying to look at the stars, how much, how little of the night sky that you can see. But if you make the effort to go out of town, I can go down the road 15 minutes down the motorway and I can see the Milky Way down there from Blackpool, believe it or not, yeah? And I even saw the Aurora 15 minutes away from Blackpool. Far end travels, climb a mountain, yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have to climb a mountain. You can just drive up a, drive up a mountain or drive up a hill. Or you, There's some places where you can park at the top, you know, but the only problem is, is that sometimes when you park in these car parks, you get all other people coming in cars and, and then all, you've got all the lights. So you have, if you want to go somewhere dark and you need to, you need to try and stay away from lights, it's best not to be where loads of other people are going to be driving up you know so that is a bit of a problem if you're near the road sometimes you have to just make that little bit of an effort and move away from the car park and just move down uh, somewhere where you're not going to see people's driver's headlights and things like that and other people coming around you get people going around with these head torches on and and <laughs> I, I, I can't stand those people that go around with their big head torches on lighting up all the sky and they can't see anything i i, I I, I can't stand those head torches. I like the red ones because I use a red one. When I have a head torch on, it's always a red one. I never, ever use a white head torch. Never, ever. Do you get back on the right nightcap? Can you get back onto the nightcap app subject? Rare disabled. But wherever dog is, yeah, well, that's another thing as well. Farang travels. High up in Stephen. The sky so clear. Oh, wow, Julie, where are you? You'll have to let me know. I like pollution map, that's good, yeah, I like pollution map is good. Yeah, nightcap app, I haven't got it on my phone at the moment, I've took it off because I wasn't using it, because I don't, I don't really need to use it, but nightcap app 
if you're interested in taking photos of the night sky and all you've got is a phone, you haven't got a camera, get Nightcap app. Have a look at it. It allows you to do, Jeremy, not much here in East Anglia, but some remote locations. Yeah, you can see the Aurora from there, Jeremy. From, I've seen a few people. You can see it last week. I think it was last week, the Aurora. Nightcap app. <clears throat> there are other ones. There are other ones, but Nightcap is probably the best. It allows you to do timed pictures of the night sky. Halifax, she says. Oh, wow, Halifax. Yeah. The only thing about Halifax is it's not, it's kind of, it's very close to, she says it's in the countryside. Well, it'd be pretty dark there. Yeah. It will be pretty dark. Oh, by the way, I've got a quiz coming up. I have got a quiz, a 10 question quiz. I've got five easy questions and five more difficult questions. So we've got a quiz coming up at half past eight. So watch out for that. Yeah, so NICAP app. It's, uh, I think it was the first one, the first of the astronomy apps to come out that allowed you to take pictures, you know, like a normal camera where you could override your phone. Because if you're trying to take pictures with your phone using the basic camera, you're going to have a job doing it because it's not really meant to take, you know, pictures like that. So this, this program does allow you to take pictures and it allows you to set up a timer on your camera. So you can take those pictures of the stars, you know where the stars make those fancy trails. Does anyone want to try and take star trails? I'll have to show you how, how to do them. It's not that hard. I saw the Aurora near Newmarket some years ago. We've got 61 people watching. Hit the like button. Hit the thumbs up. Let's see that go up from 37. 61 watching. Hit the thumbs up. Up, 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 up. Keep hitting the thumbs up. Hi, Frank in Blackpool. Frank in Blackpool took the thumbnail to this video. Thanks for Frank. We were up there on Rivington Pike. Um, I did do a video while I was up there. You can have a look at that. I did it uh, the other week. That was <laughs> that was not easy to do, that video. They're not easy to do, these videos. I'm struggling at the moment. I'm really, really struggling to do these videos. That's why I've not been doing as many videos but I'm going to try and see if I can do a video this week and see if I can do a star trail video. I'm going to try and simplify my videos. Maybe do some short videos and try and throw a load of short videos out as long as I get to the point quick and I don't go on. I think I tended to go on quite a bit in the past you know. I said, I thought I'm watching my old videos and I'm thinking get on with it Steve what are you doing? He says get on with it stop, stop mumbling on and talk about what you're meant to be talking about. It's been cloudy and overcast for weeks here in the Lake District. Good view at Longridge, yeah, Longridge is pretty good, yeah. You go up Longridge Fell, if you go, you can drive to the top of Longridge Fell. You can see Blackpool from up there. But you don't want to be looking towards Blackpool though, because it's going to be really, really... Let's get the matching number. Watching, yes. Yeah, well, we're, we're getting there, we're now up to 50 likes. Hit the like button, click the thumbs up. You can do it on the TV. If you move your little uh, D-pad up, it brings up the option to all the options and you can do a thumbs up on your TV. So Frank, my mom lives in Longridge, says Frank in Blackpool. We sometimes go to Hawthorne Thwaite Fell. I think Hawthorne Thwaite is one of the tallest fells around here, isn't it? It's next to Fairstape, isn't it? Is that the one that's to the north of Fairstape? I've been to the top of Fairstape and that's, it's got a very flat top to it. You get a great view of Blackpool from up there. So, yeah, it'd be pretty good up there. It won't be the darkest, but it will be dark towards enough. You'd have a great view of seeing the Aurora just north of Blackpool, because as soon as you get north of Blackpool, there's not really much there until you get up to um, Scotland, really. There's, there's, there's not a lot between... Once you get north of Blackpool, you've got Lancaster and you've got a few other places, but there's nothing... It's not like, once you get past that, you know, like you've got the Manchester, Bolton, you've got Blackburn, Burnley, all these places down here in the northwest. And the amount of light that comes off all those places is, is intense. It is insane. I've seen your vision, Tenerife, Lanzarote is also very good for green, yeah. Anywhere down there is pretty good because it's dry. Um, we love your mumbling, your funny bloke, says Sam, yeah. I can't help myself. I probably will still go on, won't I? I have to try not to if I can. <clears throat> yeah, we've got 55 likes, 67 people watching. Don't forget to hit the like if you haven't already hit it. Hi, Marilyn. 
Bunry is amazing. I don't know Bunry. So I have been busy in the last week. Is the top of Blackpool Tower any good for starcasing? Well, I've never even tried it. <laughs> I'd probably say no if they've got it turned on. If it's turned off, um, maybe. It might be better than being on the ground because you will be above that glow of light. So it will be better than being on the ground, certainly. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Wayne. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. No chance on Tyneside. Lol. Yeah. The, the, we've had a lot of clouds just in the last few days, so it's not been very good. But uh, we have, you know, up, up until so early last week, it was pretty good. And, there was, and we actually had, you know what? I was doing star trail photographs. You know where you get the fancy stars doing the trails and all that. And I was doing them with the moon out. But the moon was behind me or to the side. And that was the trick, you see. What I was doing was I was setting up a scene to do a star trail photograph inside Stanley Park. I'm going to do a video. I'll definitely do a video on it to show you what I did because the pictures come out really, really good. So I set up a scene inside Stanley Park with the sun, with the moon, sorry, sort of behind me or to the side, high to volcano time lapse. And the moon would light up the foreground and that's the idea so i i actually prefer to do star trail photographs those time lapse star trail photographs when when the moon is around as long as you don't get it in the shot of course because it would just wash everything out we will have a star named after you stephen see if you can spot it in the sky yeah you know someone paid to have a star named after me i don't know how much they paid it was a christmas present but i i think it's a bit of a con myself you know there's there's millions and millions of stars up there and, you basically just get some coordinates and this star is here and they expect you to look for it and that, you know, they've, apparently I've got one named after me and uh, uh, it's, it's all a con, it's a con. <laughs> Don't believe the star name things, they're just a con. Yeah, they're just a way to make money. They'll give you a star and they'll say, you're this star and they'll give you the exact coordinates for that star. And you'll never be able to find it because when you look through a telescope, there are literally millions of stars inside your field of view. You'll never be able to find the one that that's named after you. And uh, yeah, it's all a bit, so it's all just made up. So there you go. I don't believe in it. Hi, Helen, up there in Scotland. Helen's here. Helen was on my last video. So... I hope we don't break the connection again because last time I did this live stream I had a problem with the router and we lost the connection. I have moved it since. I've, it was kind of buried down the back of the printer so I've, I've moved it away from the back of the printer. So it's, um, I think it's in a better position now. So yeah, so I'm just looking now to see what we can see now. It's very good to look for the planets after sunset, but I think at the moment, I think maybe we might have lost our chance, you know? I think, really, Jupiter's the only planet that you can... Do you use a Star Trek? Yes, I do. You can have a look at some videos on Star Trekers, yeah. So at the moment, um, we are... Uh, Saturn's gone. Jupiter is going. If you look towards the southwest... Thanks, Keith. You might just spot Jupiter after sunset. Best time to look is about seven o'clock or half six, half six to seven o'clock. You can see Jupiter low down. It's going to be low down. I watched a video about Blackpool, which you mentioned in a Starman link. That silver fox, yeah. This is my other channel. This is the one that I started back in 2018, by the way, long before I started my other channel. You've heard all the same, but all the gear and all the, that's me. Motorized sky, watch the telescope with camera attachment. Never got any decent pictures collecting so collecting dust well i'll have to see if i can get out and get a telescope because i haven't really been using a telescope lately either i've not really been out using my tracker you know that's the only thing i've not been using for a while i've not used it since i don't think i've used no i've not used it since last september the tracker all i've been doing really is taking moon pictures and taking star trails that's all i've been doing lately so I'm just looking now at Stellarium just to see what is up planet-wise at the moment. And we've got Jupiter, and that's it really, after sunset. Um, 
I mean, I suppose if you wait all night, let's see if there's anything comes up later in the morning. Well, we have the moon coming up in the morning at the moment. I'm uh, not seeing anything. Mars is a morning object and as well as Venus. You might, if you're up early, you might just manage to spot Mars and Venus fairly close together, but they'll be very low down. So it might be better to look for them. Let's get more views for Starman, says Ash. Thanks, Wayne. <clears throat> so, so it's not a great time for planets right now, I'm afraid, but it will get better. And I think Jupiter is going to be pretty good later in the year. So we'll just have to hang on and see how that does. But the best thing at the moment, if you want to see some stars at the moment, the best thing to do is to look out at about, say about nine o'clock or, yeah, yeah, about, about nine o'clock and you'll see Orion. You can't miss it, Orion the Hunter. That's the best constellation to see in the sky right now at this time of year. And the moon's not in the way at the moment. The moon's gone. It's way out of the way. It doesn't rise until, I don't think the moon rises until um, till after midnight. So, so that uh, the, the moon is out of the way for now. So there's a chance for us to see the stars and the Milky Way again. Coming to Blackpool on 24, so it's no longer. So, yeah, so the best um, constellation that you can see at the moment is Orion. It's unmissable. You cannot miss Orion. Orion the Hunter, look out for it. It looks like an hourglass. So you've got the two stars at the top, Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, and then you've got the belt stars in the middle. And you've got two stars at the bottom called Safe and Rigel. So I'll just show you Orion. Now there's Orion there. Look, you cannot miss Orion in the sky. There it is, Orion, just in case you were wondering. So you've got the belt stars here. These are the famous belt. You cannot miss Orion. It is one of the most famous constellations in the whole sky. And yet we can only really see it for six months. Orion. I think our most famous constellation, in fact, it's not a constellation. It's part of a constellation. You know the saucepan or the plough? That is probably the most recognisable object that we can see in our night sky. Uh, but like I say, it's not actually a constellation. And the reason for that is because this the plough, can you see here, this picture here, can you see that? That's actually the plough. Can you see? This here is the plough. You see? But it's part of a bigger constellation, which is called the Great Bear. But we can only really see this section here. Can you see? We can only really see this particular, see the handle there down to the, the bowl? We can't really see these other stars. Well, we can, but they're not very clear. So this is actually called an asterism. This section here, the plough or the Big Dipper or the saucepan, whatever you want to call it, is called an asterism. It's a recognisable part uh, group of stars in the sky that you can see that are not a constellation. And they can be parts of other constellations. They can be like, borrowed from other constellations as well. They call it an asterism. People just supposed to go supernova. Well, we thought it was going to go supernova last year when it, a couple of years ago, and it went really, really dim. Do you remember? I ran to be close to the Malverns. I like the Malverns. I've seen them from the um, M50. What's the M5? Is it the M5? They look amazing from the M5. Look up the hills in my telescope there. So, however, want a better one? Do you have any recommendations? If anyone wants a telescope, I'd recommend a refractor as a starter telescope, or a small, a small reflecting telescope of a maybe 130 to 150 millimeters something like that i would recommend as a first telescope like a three inch refractor or a sort of like a four inch reflector that's what i would um recommend can you see the milky way by eye anywhere in the uk yeah in a lot of places you can dave jackson but then you can't see it in as many places as what, you know, you should do because of all the lights. Are you giving away answers to the quiz? I might sometimes give away answers to the quiz in the first section. I might do that sometimes, you know. But uh, you might not remember, you might, you might forget them. So I've got a quiz coming up in about five minutes. 
So yeah, I was just talking about Orion. Now Orion itself is actually, what the main stars that you actually see are an asterism as well. It's like an hourglass. It looks like an hourglass, you know, with the, the belt stars in the middle. There's, there's, let's see, one, two, three, seven stars, is it? Seven stars, seven very bright stars in Orion that you can clearly see. And they look like an hourglass. And that is actually an, an asterism in itself because it's part of the Orion. The constellation itself is much, much bigger than that. There's more stars to it. Apparently the Egyptians built the pyramids using the stars for a lot. Yes. Stefan Jefferson, yeah. Yeah, Beetlejuice could, could have already gone supernova, but we won't know about it because uh, the light has to take 500 years to get to us. So, because Beetlejuice, well, Beetle, I think Beetlejuice is about 650 light years away. Something like that. It's a long, long way away. So even if it went supernova right now, we wouldn't, we wouldn't notice for 650 years. And a couple of years ago, at this time of the year, Beetlejuice went very, very dim. People noticed that the star go really, really dim. It went really, really dim. It lost a lot of its brightness. And people were thinking, is it going to, you know, is it like sort of contracting or something before it like blows up? And if it had blown up, it would have been spectacular. The council, <clears throat> if the council built the pyramids, they'd only be half finished, yeah. They would be. Rigel is 900 light years away. Yeah, Rigel's a very bright star. That's the one that's on the bottom right of Orion. Now, there's also something else to look out for as well. So you've got Orion that's fairly easy to look out for. I just want to show you something else as well, which is... Uh, it's an asterism. I've just talked to you about asterisms. And this one, I don't know if I can get it on here, but uh, if I could just sort of show you this. Now you see on there, the green line is the southern meridian. You see, that's looking south. Can you see how Orion is up here? There's Orion, almost reaching its highest point there. And this would be at what, about nine o'clock in the evening? Nine o'clock, so you've got Orion reaching its highest point. Now there's, there's, you've got the very bright star Sirius down here, it's low down, you can't miss Sirius. You cannot be serious. that is Sirius. The brightest star that we can see in our sky that's not our sun. So Sirius, which follows Orion, it follows it through the sky. Follow the belt stars to see Sirius because the belt stars point towards Sirius which is the brightest star in our sky after our sun. So, so up here we've got Betelgeuse, which is very recognisable, red giant, Sirius, and over here we've got another one called Procyon. All these are bright stars and they form a triangle. Can you see? These form a triangle, Betelgeuse, Sirius and Procyon to the left-hand side of Orion, and that is called the Winter Triangle right there. So those stars form the winter triangle. You can go out, if it's clear where you are, go out and go and see if you can see it. The winter triangle. Some good places to see the night sky in the morning. What app are you using? It's Stellarium, Carl. If you're on social media, share the stream and the channel. <coughs> Stellarium is showing the Milky Way. Yeah, it does. If you notice, uh, you can see the Milky Way there. It does actually show. Can you see that sort of the band that goes through the... So that's actually the Milky Way, and you can see how the, the, the galactic plane goes, just skirts above Orion there, can you see? But it's actually the faintest part of the Milky Way that we can see. It's the faintest part of the Milky Way, and the reason for that is because we're looking outside the galaxy. We're looking, we're looking towards the outside, the outer layers of the galactic arms. We're not looking into the centre of the galaxy, and that's why... The Milky Way in the winter is very, very faint. It's very, very subtle. It's because we're tilted towards, we're, we're looking towards the outside of the galaxy rather than inside the galaxy. If you're looking towards the inside of the galaxy, there's more stars clumped and more, a lot more going on. And that's why in the summer, if you see the summer Milky Way, it looks really, really spectacular. It's got clumps of stars and bright patches and dark patches and it looks absolutely amazing but in the winter we're kind of orientated the other way around you know we kind of we're 
we're, we're on the other side of the sun. The sun is actually in the brighter part of the sky, the, the, the galactic, where the brighter part of the Milky Way is. It's in that part of the sky. And we're looking the other way. We're looking the other way. So, so it's still a very nice Milky Way that you can see in the winter. It's just not quite as bright as what it is in summer. Yeah, Stellarium, unfortunately, does not show asterism, so I can't paint out that triangle on here, unfortunately. you think it would let me do that, wouldn't you? But it won't. Yeah, so there you go, that's Stellarium. If you want to program a star program for your phone or whatever, I would recommend Stellarium. Uh, so that's Stellarium. You can do all sorts of things. I've actually done a video on Stellarium showing it what all these controls do. You know down here what they all do. I've done a video on it and it, all astronomers use Stellarium. Have you ever seen Elon Musk's star? Yes, I have. I've seen them a few times. Yeah, <laughs> you can't miss them. I remember seeing them in the Lake District. Those are the, the SpaceX satellites that they sent up and there were loads of them. I was watching them going. I did a video on them. Did I do a video? I think I did a video on them. Uh, last year, was it? I did a video showing all these satellites going to Costa Cana. You get one going dead slow, and then another one comes on, and they keep keep coming. It, and I took a picture of them, and you, you could see like a streak across the sky where all these satellites had gone. So, yeah, uh, a little bit of a pain. Can you imagine in about another 10 years, if they keep sending up satellites like that, the whole sky is going to be... There's lights going all over the place, isn't there? Like stars moving everywhere. It's uh, it's not looking good, really, is it? You know, for for astronomy, if, if that's going to happen, you know, if they're going to keep sending up all these satellites all over the place, it's not going to be very good, is it? So, yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see on that. Although they do say that they reckon that they keep, they're not going to be able to see them when they get to the, when they get to where they're supposed to go. When, when, but anyway, I don't know about that. They would say that, wouldn't they? So we'll have to find out when we the way and see. Yeah, but the first time I saw the Starlink satellites, those are the ones that were sent up by SpaceX. The first time I saw them was up in the Lake District. I, could, I was taking a picture of the Milky Way and it was quite early in the morning. It was about five o'clock in the morning or something stupid like that. And I turned around and I saw this thing go across the sky and then another one and then another one and then another one. <laughs> And it, this kept coming and coming and coming. I thought, that that must be Starlink, you know. So there you go. That's the Starlink satellites for you. 69 watching and we've got 75 lights. We've got more lights and they've got people watching. That's good, isn't it? That makes a change. Yeah. Anyway, who's ready for the quiz? Right. Who's ready for the quiz? Let me know if you can hear me okay. Applied is or... I'm not going to, that's, <laughs> hey, actually, let's get on with this quiz. They do ruin my photos. Yeah. Well, satellites already do ruin photos because um, professional telescopes do take a lot of pictures of the sky. And even the professional telescopes get satellites going in the way, you know. So um, they are a bit of a problem. So, if you have more of them, then there's more. I mean, they're talking about thousands of these things, aren't they? Mooney's Daydream says they can hear me. Thanks, Mooney's Daydream. I've got my new fancy microphone. Have you seen my microphone? Look, look at this, look. Hey, can you see that? <laughs> it's a Rode Wireless Go 2. Yeah, so I've uh, I pushed the boat out with the audio and I decided to buy a wireless microphone. It was Frank in Blackpool that advised me to get the Rode Wireless 2, so that's what I'm using. I'm using it for all, well, most of my videos. Check that microphone out, yeah, yeah. Isn't it fancy? So I can stand, I can, I can go into the other room and you'll still be able to hear me. You tell me. <laughs> Let's do a test, shall we? I'm just going to leave the room. I'm just going to leave the room now. No wires. I'm not going to pull the camera over. I'm just going into the other room now. You might be able to tell it's going to get a little bit echoey. Now then, is it sound echoey now? I hope you can still hear me. 
You probably hear the reverb because I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> Did it work? I'll tell you what, I can hardly move in this room. You want to see the amount of junk I've got in this room? It's, it's incredible. I could, I've got no room to, mo to move in this studio at the moment. One of the best places I stargazed was Arizona. Yeah, Arizona is really, really good. Yeah, I've been to Arizona. It is awesome. It's dry and it's dark. Satellites are nice to watch though. Yeah, they can be, if you see the odd one. So did the microphone work then? Yeah, sounds great, but sounds like you're in a cupboard. Yeah, I went into the bathroom. Marcus Shaw, no, I don't. I don't have time. Mooney's Daydream said it worked. Yes, it did. Yes, it works, yeah. So there you go, that, that's the advantage of a wireless microphone because I can, I can walk where I want and there's no tripping over wires and sometimes I pull the wire on the, on the thing and it ends up pulling the phone off the... It's a nightmare to have a... A microphone on a wire. Uh, so there you go, I've got a wireless microphone. Anyway, who's ready for the quiz? It's quiz time. Five easy questions and then I've got five more difficult questions. So who's up for the quiz? I might have even mentioned some of the answers in the first half. So it doesn't matter if I do because you should be listening. You might hear something. I'd be skint if I have a wife. Yeah, I think I would be a no. I don't think I'd have all this stuff here. I don't think I'd be doing half of what I'm doing. <laughs> now then, here we go. Question number one. Does anybody know what phase the moon is currently in tonight? What phase the moon is currently in tonight? There's a certain phase that it's in tonight. Does anybody know what phase it's in? I'll give you a clue. It's not a full moon. <laughs> it was a full moon. Um, what was it? A full moon? It was a full moon last weekend, wasn't it? Yeah. So, well, the beginning of the last week. Actually, the sort of beginning of last week, wasn't it? It's two words. Some of you are getting it. Some of you are getting part of it. It's two words. Polly W, you got it kind of the wrong way around almost. Joe 90, you got it half right. Midlands Girl's got it. Midlands Girl, Midlands Girl was first to get it. It's a waning gibbous. It's a waning gibbous moon. Yeah, it's waning, which means it's gone past full. So when it goes past a full moon, it starts to, the, the, it, the light on the moon from the sun goes off. It, it, uh, it, it then heads back towards the sun again, where it will be, we won't be able to see it. So, and that would be a new moon. But yeah, at the moment it's a waning gibbous. Gibbous meaning that it's more than 50% lit. It's less than full, but more than 50. Anything between 50% and full is a gibbous phase. I think it's about 65% or 60% or something like that. So in a, in, a, in a day or two, it will be a last quarter moon, which means it'll be a half moon. It'll be a slap bang on a half moon, but in the last quarter. So then it'll end up going towards a crescent, a waning crescent, and then it'll be back in front of the sun again. It'll be rising when the sun's rising, so you won't be able to see it, and that will be a new moon. And then once it swings around the other side of the sun, it will start lighting up on the other side, and then it will be a waxing crescent, and then it all starts all over again. So there you go. The moon. So much to talk about with the moon. Yeah. So they've all got it now. It's a waning gibbous. Okay, question number two. What is the proper name of the winter cluster, little star cluster, the Seven Sisters? What's the proper name What's the name of the star cluster, the Seven Sisters, which you can see if you go outside now, you can see, you can't miss it. As long as you're not somewhere too bright, you can see a cluster of stars, probably about seven. I think you can see more than seven, but uh, Seven Sisters are called. What is the proper name for the Seven Sisters? Keith Williams is first. Keith Williams is on it. Ash is on it. Frank's on it. 
Yeah, we've all got it. <clears throat> I think you've done well with this one. The Pleiades. It's actually spelt P-L-E-I-A-D-E-S, Pleiades. So that, <clears throat> yeah, it's the Pleiades. I think that's a Japanese word, that it came from Japan. Because you know Subaru cars? Subaru, I think, stands for, I think Subaru. You know Subarus? They have those stars on the front. They're meant to represent the Pleiades. So if anyone's got a Scooby, you've got a car that's uh, named after the Pleiades. So there you go. One for the Scooby, Scooby fans out there. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you did pretty well on that one. Now then. <laughs> Here's another one that I mentioned in the first hour, so I hope you're listening. What's the what's the bright red star in Orion called? What is the bright red star at the top left of Orion? I think quick, people are googling these here very quick. Don't Google. If you if you do Google, you're not really learning. What you really want to do is you want to try and guess, and then once you know the answer, try and look it up and see what, what, what you think it look there. It's all coming in now. Yeah. 79 people watching, that is really good. We've got 79 people watching and we've got 89 likes. That's really, I wonder if we could get to 100 likes. If anyone hasn't hit the like button who's watching now, hit the thumbs up. Let's see if we can get more people watching. Hit the like button. Say it three times and he will appear. We're up to 91 likes. Let's see if we can get to 100. We've got 77 people watching. That's pretty good for a star man. We're doing an astro quiz here. I'm just up to question four. We got that one right, it was Beetlejuice. I did mention Beetlejuice, the bright red star in Orion. You cannot miss it. If you go out right now in, in, and you look towards the south, you'll see Orion, it'll be up there. And Beetlejuice is the bright red star up there on the left-hand side, you can't miss it. When was a kid, I used to call it Beetlejuice as a kid. Everyone hit the like button, thanks Mid Midland Girl. No idea when this one says the abandoned hunter. More views for Starman, says Ash. Yeah, okay, so we're up to question four of the Astro Quiz for this week. Question number four. Oh, look, 100 likes, 100! We've got 100! 100 likes! One well, of my favourite husband, Lee, to hi to. Hi to your, hi, hi, you're the favourite from my husband, Lee. Oh, thanks. Look all the time on YouTube. We've got 100 likes, and we've only got 77 people. Well, I say only, 77. That's a lot of people watching this. I mean, I did a live stream before on my other channel and I had about 700 people watching, but I'm used to getting a lot of viewers on that one, but not so many on this one. So it's good to have that many people watching. We're now up to question four. And again, I've mentioned this one at the start in the first half, which is the closest planet in the solar system to the sun? Yay, moon is daydream. We did it. We did it. We got to 100. Can we get to 100 viewers? Can we get to 100 viewers? Share, share, share. Tell everybody to watch this video. We've still got five more questions in the second half, five harder questions. So we're up to question four of the easy ones, which is the closest planet to the sun. And we've already got answers coming in. Keith Williams is quick again. Marcus Shaw, thanks. Midlands girl, yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not Googling, are you? No, I trust, I trust you, like, you you're not Google. I know you're not Google now. <laughs> well, what I do say is if you don't know the answer and then you find out the answer, have a look. Look it up. Look it up in a book or look it up online and find out. Make a note of it and that way you'll probably learn. Frank in Blackpool says Pluto. <laughs> okay, right. Question number five. What's the name of the North Star? What's the proper name of the North Star? I think we're talking about this when I do my Star Trails video. Yeah, what's the proper name of the North Star? It's not that bright, the North Star, you know. If I go out on a night, I can find the North Star just like that, because I know, I just know where it is. It's very, very easy to find. Yeah, the right answers are all coming in. Marilyn Kennedy's got it, Ash. Richard Gatsby, Keith, Keith Williams says serious. You can not be serious. It's not serious. It's Polaris. 
that it, it might even have another name because stars got named by all sorts of civilizations but polaris is the one that's uh that's the one that's listed you know that's the official sort of name you know uh but yeah some stars do have other names you know other than you know because they're named by all different civilizations oh and i said pole star I said moon scale yeah so there you go i think we did pretty well on that yes ash polaris is not that bright but you can see it from pretty much anywhere. You can see it from town, no problem. As long as you know how to find it, you use the pointer stars on the plough to find it. So I'll have to, I'm not, I'm not sure if I've done a video. I think I'll have to do a video just showing that. You can find it if you know where north is. Yeah, that's handy. It's 101 likes. We've got 77 watching. Can we get over 80 people watching? Do you have your own saying to remember the order of the planets? No, I don't. No, I know the order of the planets anyway. Yeah, so from the closest one, it's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And for those Pluto fans, I'll say Pluto, even though Pluto's not a planet. It's a dwarf planet. So, there you go. Okay, so that was the easy questions, and now up to the hard questions. So, who's ready for the hard questions? Now then, <clears throat> Frank's saying Pluto. So I think Frank has got a liking for Pluto. Okay, there's a galaxy that's visible in the night sky. It's called the Andromeda Galaxy. And it's the most distant object that we can see with the naked eye. But how far away is it? How far away is the Andromeda galaxy? You can actually see it with your own eyes. You can see it. Another galaxy that's outside of our Milky Way. How far away is it? That's the thing. How far away is it? Hi, Rick. Rick's in the house. Richard Gatenby's got it. Yes, look at that. I think I, I think you've two thousand five hundred million. I think I know what you're trying to say there, Richard. Two point five million light years. Yeah. Not two hundred and fifty thousand. Is that two hundred fifty million? No, not two hundred fifty. Two point five million, roughly. Twenty five thousand light years. If it was twenty five thousand light years away, it'd be inside the Milky Way, because the Milky Way is only a hundred thousand light years across. So. It would be it would be right on top of us, but it will be because it, the, our galaxies are coming towards each other. We are coming towards the Andromeda galaxy. Yeah, we're going to collide with it. So we're going to crash into it sometime. But it won't be like a normal collision. It'll just be like a coming together. And uh, yeah, well, in fact, I don't even think it'll be disastrous for Earth. Actually, I think Earth will carry on. Yeah. Sounds like it's going to be a disaster, but I don't think it will be. Yeah, so it's 2.5 million light years away, and you can see it. You can watch If you want to find it, watch one of my videos, because I've done videos on it, how to find the Andromeda Galaxy. How fast exactly is Earth's rotation time? How fast? Only 5 billion days. That would be one hell of a show, yeah. In fact, they were saying that it wouldn't be a show. You know, that it all happened so slow and no stars would crash into each other because they're all so far away. So how, how long does it take the Earth to rotate exactly? There's a theory that no stars will collide. That's right, because it, stars are about four light years away from each other. Each, on average, the four, four light years away. On a, you know, when two galaxies collide, there's, what's the chances of stars? I mean, there's billions and millions of stars. You might get the odd one crashing into each other, but... On the whole, no, it's not going to happen. The abandoned hunter, no. <clears throat> 23.5. If it was 23.5 hours, I think we'd be having one heck of a leap year. <laughs> how, how, how long does it take to rotate in hours and minutes? Yeah, you... Pretty much, yeah, yeah, 24 hours, yeah, but not exactly 24 hours. 
Midlands Girl's got it bang. I hope, I hope you're not Googling this Midlands Girl. Midlands Girl is very, very correct. 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds. Yeah, it takes 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds for the Earth to make a complete rotation. Yeah, so there you go. We just round it up to 24 hours because it's easier, you know. But then we have to, you know, have a leap year every so often, you know. <laughs> it's not ideal, but there, that's what you, that's what we have to do, isn't it? Yeah, Rick Freeman said 23 hours and a bit. That sounds about right. Or you could say 24 hours, just uh, a couple of minutes short of 24 hours. Now then, question number eight on the hard ones. I need the exact, or well, I might, I might take a degree off, but we'll see. What is the angle of tilt of the Earth at the moment? I say at the moment because it's always changing. Changes every 41,000 years. What is the actual tilt? of the earth at this very moment in time it does change it does the tilt does change over time in fact i think it might be the tilt that's responsible for ice ages you know it could be some good good answers coming in now already Ash, oh midlands girl's got it again bang on <laughs> midlands girl is on a roll the tech giant jeremy miller's trying to get the Tech, oh, I had the Tech Giant watching my stream before. He's got a lot of subscribers, the Tech Giant. Yeah, 26. It, it's not 26, it's not 25. It can be 25, I think, in, because the, the, the tilt of the Earth can change over a long, long period, thousands and thousands of years. At the moment, <clears throat> at the moment, the tilt of the Earth is 23.4 degrees off the ecliptic. So when we go around the sun, the Earth is tilted something like that, and it just keeps going around like that all the time. It doesn't, you know, I mean, it does, I mean, the Earth does, it does kind of wobble a little bit. You kind of, you get a little bit of a wobble between the Earth and the Moon. As it, it, nothing's ever perfect. Nothing's ever going around in a perfect circle. Yeah, the tilt wobbles. And and we also spin, we wobble, we, um, we the, the Earth precesses as well, you know. So not only is the North Star not going to be the North Star, it, it that changes about I think it's every twenty seven thousand years the North Star, it goes from the North Star back to the North Star again, but it goes through all these other stuff. Vega can be the North Star, you know. I think Vega is going to be the next North Star. So even the North Star is not always going to be in the same place. So there you go. The, or the, should I say Polaris is not always going to be in the same place. Okay, so we're now up to question nine. Something like 25 years for a complete procession, yeah. I think it's about 27, Ash. And I think it's about 41,000 years for the tilt of the Earth. And that could be responsible for some of these ice ages, you know, when we get ice ages and things like that, because if it's more tilted away, you could get parts of the Earth freezing and stuff like that. Here's the question. How can fast the Midlands Girl <laughs> Google? I don't think Midlands Girl is Googling. 71 people watching. Rick says he was way off. Right, I will be finishing this bang on nine o'clock because I've got other stuff to do. So, there's a path that the sun takes through the sky. What is the name of the path that the sun takes through the sky? Can anyone name the path of the sun through the sky? So there's a, there's a line that the sun follows through the sky. There's a particular line it follows and it follows the zodiac the zodiac she's she's in again midlands girl is on fire she is right in there ash has got it paul thorpe solar orbit um you could call it the solar orbit i suppose anthony goodwin yep epileptic It's all gone quiet. Got 70 watching, got 108 likes. So what's the name of the path of the sun? The name of the path of the sun is the ecliptic. So the ecliptic is the name given to the path of the sun and it follows all the, so you know the signs of the zodiac. 
Now, I am not an astrologer, but the sun goes through 12 constellations in its year. So, at the, I'm not sure where it is at the moment. Is it Scorpius or something? I'm not sure. Scorpio. It could be in Scorpio. I'm not sure right now. I'm not big up on astrology, but uh, it should be on the chase log. But I'm the fifth judge on Britain's Got Talent on Tuesday. Oh, wow. I shall be on the chase, but on the fifth judge on Britain's Got Talent on Tuesday, says Midland School. That's interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's basically the zodiac, um, the zo so all the zodiacal constellations, you know, your Leos, your Cancers, your, your Tauruses, all that, the sun will go through all of those, and it's called the ecliptic plane. It's the path of the sun. It's basically the, the as we go around the sun, that, that plane is called the ecliptic plane. Yeah. <clears throat> but obviously, with the tilt of the Earth, the ecliptic is always up and down because the Earth is tilted, and as we go around the sun, the ecliptic is, is all over the place. You know, it's, uh, it's up and down all over the place. So it can get very, very confusing. But yeah, the path of the sun through the sky is called the ecliptic. So there you go. Look it up. Last question, last of the hard, hard questions, and then we're off then. Right, um, got another planet question for you. You lost me Zodiac, says Rick Freeman. Okay, how many moons does Mars have? Does Mars even have any moons? How many moons does the planet Mars have? The red planet, it... Does it have moons? And if so, how many? Oh, Midlands girl was beaten. Sam H was in there with two. Carol Smith says three. Not quite. Marilyn Kennedy says two. Frank says two. Marcus Shaw says none. You'd probably think there was none because you can't obviously see any. But Mars does actually have two moons. But they're not your normal moons. Ash has got them right. Phobos and Deimos. Mars has got a couple of moons, but they're very, very small. In fact, they're just rocks. They're just asteroids. Anthony's got them. A couple of asteroids that fly around Mars. In fact, they're not probably proper moons. They're probably just captured. You can't really call them moons in a way because they're not even round, you know. So it's a bit of a funny one, really. But they are, they are classed as moons that go around Mars. Phobos and Deimos. And yeah, so there you go. Mars does have moons and I think one of those orbiters is um, one of those the orbiters have photographed them you know that go around the planet and I think even one of the rovers has photographed them as well you know when they go across the path of the sun they can get a picture of them when they go across the path of the of the sun or something like that so you can get a photograph of it can it kind of eclipse the sun so you can get a picture of it that way as well or maybe even the Earth, possibly, and even captured. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're probably captured more than anything. I don't really know why they call them moons, really, but they do go around. So I suppose they have to be classed as moons if they go around the planet, you know. So even though they're not circular, they're not spherical. They're kind of just they're only small. I mean, they're only fourteen miles and eight miles wide between them. You know, Phobos is fourteen miles and Deimos is eight miles. So they're literally. You know, they're not even as big as Blackpool, you know, they're, they're so small, these things. And the subjects are minimal. How come they end up, if there's some, end up round if there's nothing out there to affect them? Well, everything normally ends up round because the gravity, you know, crushes things down and it gets, when something gets so big, it crushes down that it's all even, you know, there's so much, the even amount of gravity. But if something's small, there's not enough gravity to act on it, so it kind of looks rough. But if it keeps it, if it keeps attracting more and more stuff to it, eventually it will, over time, it, it will it will form in round, it will form a perfect, well, not perfect, but it will form a sphere over time, yeah? Although that doesn't mean that it's going to be absolutely perfect sphere. I mean, it could even get hit by another asteroid and that could knock a big chunk out of it and then you'll have a big... If you've ever seen the moon, my, I think it's my mass that goes around... Look up my mass the moon that goes around Saturn, because it, they call it the Death Star moon, because it's got a massive big crater on it. 
<laughs> it's called the Death Star Moon. My, I think it's Mimas. Yeah, Mimas. Look it up, because Saturn has got some really interesting moons. It's probably got the most interesting moons. Well, Jupiter's got some interesting moons, but Saturn's got some as well. It's got Enceladus. It's got Iapetus, the yin and yang moon, the one that's black on one side and white on the other. It's got Titan, the one that's got atmosphere, the only moon that's got atmosphere, well, the only moon that's got a proper atmosphere. So Saturn has got quite a lot. We're just over an hour now. I think we're just into five, nine o'clock. So that's it for this live stream. Yep, the quiz is over. You all did really well. Midlands girl did really well. I think uh, she won. If we just take the comments. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I will probably be back at eight o'clock <clears throat> from here next week. I'm going to have to tidy this room. I'm not going to show you what's going on in this room, but I'm literally s surrounded by junk at the moment. So <laughs> I've been chucking everything in here. Anyway, there you go. That's the quiz for this week. Thanks for everyone to join in. We had, I think we had almost 80 people watching, which is really good. We had 108 likes. So thanks for watching everybody. And well done to those on the quiz. I think most of you did really, really well. I'll have another quiz next week. And I will see you again at eight o'clock next week. And uh, I'll see you all then. Bye now.